Fireside Tales. Hello, I'm Merlin Malili. Welcome to my fireside, where I tell weird tales within tales. And I drink coffee. drink coffee from my skull mug because I'm a deadhead I also tell the story of the Grateful Dead every week here at Fireside Tales because I'm a deadhead and because I feel it's a story about reincarnation. And this show is all about reincarnation. So, I feel that people don't really understand reincarnation at all, most people in the world. So, I just, I wanted to make this show so that people would understand reincarnation more. So every week here at Fireside Tales, we discuss a metaphysical place, a place that isn't actually a place. It's a place that you can only get to through meditation or if you're a spirit. And it's called the Akashic Records or the Akasha. It's an ancient library where every soul has a book. So I guess it's more of a spiritual place. Bear, you have to be quiet. We're making the show. The dog next door is in heat and, and Bear loves her. So he's been whining for the past like three or four days and it's making me crazy. <laughs> so, you can get driven crazy by Bear too. Yay! I'm not alone. Okay, Bear. Anywho, so in the Akashic Records, I have a book. When I was a teenager, I was given a key to the Akashic Records. And I've since visited there a lot. And in the Akashic Records, my book is really big. And really old and really dusty. Bear, go eat your lunch. And so it has this watermark. I think it's from the Great Flood, the watermark, but it seems to mark where. B.C. changes to A.D. in time. And everything before the watermark is light and dry and sandy. This is a very hot fire. And my lives are much longer in the light, dry, sandy part. And then the latter part, the A.D. part, is all dark and wet and muddy. And my lives are much shorter. So, it 
So every week I've been discussing my book, basically, and all the lives that are in it. So every soul has a book in the Akashic Records, and what the book does is document where, when, who the soul has been. My book only covers my soul. So, I've also been discussing my threads in my book that link each life to the other, or all of them to each other, because these are threads that exist in every single life. So, fire. Fire is definitely one of my threads. Fire safety throughout all of my lives have, has been of the utmost importance, but also in this life, I live in California. So we cover fire safety every week. I try, I have water in the kettle on top. I have water in my little cup here. I have a sprayer around the corner. If you build a fire outside, you wanna make sure there's no overhanging branches where you build your fire pit. You wanna build a fire pit where you dig it out and you make sure there's nothing growing in there and then you layer it with rocks. Then you can build a fire if you have a bucket of water and a bucket of sand and a shovel. Then you can build your fire outside. <laughs> Please be safe with fire. So also, bear, go eat lunch. Go, 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 go eat lunch. Go eat your lunch. Eat, eat. I'm going to give your lunch to Squeaky. Go eat your lunch. Go eat it. He also isn't eating because of this dog and he is driving me insane. Anyway, so we've also been discussing some other threads of mine. Now, meditating has always been a thread of mine. And something that I've always done before meditating and before um, rituals, before uh, oh, readings, I read tarot and runes before you do any of that sort of metaphysical type of work you you want to ground and smudge this is a sage stick a smudge stick it's a it's made of sage dried sage and it's bundled with some string and when the sage is burned it cleans a person's aura it's very cleansing you can use um a smudge stick to also cleanse your house I try to do mine like once a year or so. All the reflective surfaces. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, all the doorways and windows. Especially if you move into a house, if it's a new place, you wanna you wanna smudge it. But for our purposes, we're just smudging me. And maybe Bear. Bear could use a little smudging. Hodebo. Yeah, somebody do it this year. Let's match her to it. <laughs> Anywho, so that's cleaning your aura, but to clean your inside, you want to ground. And grounding is when you blow out all of your negative. And you breathe in positive. You think an uber positive thought and then breathe out positive. This way you get all the positive vibrations running through you and around you in your aura. And then you'll attract the most positive reading, the most positive meditation, the most positive ritual, 
the results will be the most positive you can get if you ground and as much fry it. So, smudging, grounding, meditating, astral travel also. I definitely smudge and ground before astral travel. I made a video on meeting your guides. There's a guided meditation somewhere in all my videos for meeting your spirit guides. You want to take your spirit guides if you astral travel. I don't recommend astral traveling without your spirit guides. So the stars, stargazing, stones, those are all threads that have been an, a huge part of all of my lives. And obviously reincarnation is one thing they all seem to have in common. And I've also been a psychic medium in every life. So I've been able to communicate with spirits in this life and in all of my other lives. And the spirits have an idea on reincarnation that the living don't seem to understand or grasp, but all spirits seem to understand that people are reincarnated after they've been murdered. Seems to be how the multiverse works. If you get murdered, you get to come back and try again. It's kind of a nice little thing, but I've apparently been murdered about 23 times. <laughs> so uh, that's weird. And, and even in this realm, in the Akashic Records, my book is like way bigger than everyone else's. And this is why I thought I'd talk about it because it, obviously I have more information on this stuff than most other people. And if I can recollect my lives and I can recall different snippets and I can read my book in the Akashic Records, Maybe I have something to share. Maybe this is all because I'm supposed to share it with the world so that they understand. So, I think it's time for me to tell the story of the Grateful Dead as it should be told by a fire from a deadhead. Once, long, long ago, there was a traveler. It was so long ago that she traveled on foot. And one day she was traveling along and she noticed in a little village, a crowd of people. She got closer, and then she noticed the crowd was arguing. She got closer, and she noticed that the crowd was literally arguing over a dead body. They were like arguing back and forth about the dead body and literally over it. It was just laying there, and the traveler was like, <gasps> And these people, the villagers, were arguing over this dead man's debts and who was going to pay them and who was going to bury him and who was going to pay for that. And the traveler just thought the whole site was atrocious. And she stopped the villagers and she paid the dead man's debts. 
and she paid for a proper burial. And she prayed over the dead man's grave. And she traveled on. And then decades later, she happens upon a life or death situation. The traveler from the beginning of the story happens upon a life or death situation in which a stranger just swoops in and saves her life. She's astounded and says, thank you. Who are you? Where did you come from? Why did you save my life? And the stranger simply says, I am the Grateful Dead. It's a story about reincarnation. The Grateful Dead, the band, is a 60s psychedelic rock band it's affiliates are still going. Some of the original members from the Grateful Dead have carried on as Dead and Company. I think they're going with Forever Dead now. And they got their name from the story that I just told you that is in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And I tell that story every week because I have a connection with the band, The Grateful Dead, in my book. I believe you have to watch either our first or second episode to find out who I was. But I'm not here to discuss that life today. In our first season, I discussed each life in my book a little. 23 lives, 23 episodes. Then in our second season, I went back to my first life, the very first life in my book, and I discussed just this life, the first life in my book. It was really long, so I discussed it for the whole season. It was in that light, dry, sandy part. So now we are here in our third season, and we've been discussing my second life in my book in the Akashic Records. And this particular life, my second life in my book, it's kind of a life, <laughs> I would say, in quotes, the weirdest of all my lives in my book. The whole thing is way more like an afterlife, really, than a life. So this is episode eight of season three. And this particular episode is supposed to cover what we know, according to my outline that I've made for each episode since I started breaking down the longer lives since last season. So what we know about this particular life in ancient times, this was, you know, six to eight thousand years ago. So what we know about this particular life is very little as humans, you know, as earthlings.
So I've told you that I was an angel at first in this life, and then I fell to become a cloud bird. And that's what I mean by barely existing. Even as an angel, I, was, I think I was made of cloud. But I didn't lose my wings, and those seemed to be important. I don't even know exactly what a cloud bird is. <laughs> it's, um, I don't know. But many people have heard of angels, right? But how many people have actually seen or communicated with angels? I have. I've both seen and communicated with them. But I don't know anyone else who has. There's a couple people online. There's a woman who can see your angels. She's pretty cool. neat and I bet you she's right on the money but people think you know people who can see angels must be crazy and they don't understand just because you can't see doesn't mean the person who can is crazy in fact it seems a little strange that the people who can see more are always dubbed the crazy ones but the ones who have the blinders on are totally fine you know, <laughs> I don't understand, like, isn't, doesn't it make you more crazy to ignore what could possibly be right in front of you? Doesn't it make you more crazy to not want to see what's really there and admit that it's there? I mean, I, I, anyway, I'm not a psychiatrist or a doctor or anything. So I'm not here to tell you about who's crazy and who's not, but I don't think mediums are crazy. <laughs> um, so what we know about angels is basically what's in the Bible, right? So we know a little bit about angels. People have heard of them. And it's been, you know, their hierarchy and stuff that I've talked about here that actually seems to exist. Um, is It's a thing, and it's written about in the Bible. But cloud birds? I don't even... I don't even know. <laughs> I don't... I have um, never heard of anybody else ever being a cloud bird. When I was a cloud bird, there really wasn't other cloud birds. I was it until I had some babies basically to keep me company. I think I was just lonely. I didn't have to actually feed them. They were only sort of just there and I guided them to look at the heavens. We, Mainly, I was stargazed. That was that was my thing. That was what I did. I watched the whole galaxy move, and that was my job. And that was what I watched, and that's what I did. But as I was writing this show, I came to the conclusion that maybe there are a lot more... things that we could point to as evidence that we know that I gathered this information anyway about the universe. Mainly what I was doing was observing the great year, which is how the galaxy moves throughout the universe. And it's not actually a year, it's how long it takes the 
gal a whole galaxy to move through the universe, and that is like seven thousand three hundred thirty-two years or something. But the thing is, ancient people seem to be aware of this great year, and before the Bible and Jesus and all that, people worshipped planets and constellations both. They worship whatever constellation the galaxy was in for the year. When it was in Taurus, people erected all these bull statues, right? When it was in Aries, people erected all these ram statues. And people say that all the fish stuff was about Jesus, but in all actuality, the galaxy was in Pisces when Jesus was supposed to have been living. So that fish might have been an observance of not just Christian to Christian, but people who understood about the great year. And I think that maybe, this is just a, a guess, but maybe what I was doing as a cloud bird was recording for God or perhaps even just a collective consciousness. Because everyone on earth seemed to understand all that I learned up there. But prior to my going up there, I didn't know any of that. And I studied the stars and I studied angels and I talked about this in my first life. And I astral traveled and I interdimensionally traveled even in my first life. So I really don't think I knew this particular stuff about the great year until I was up there and it's like emblazoned in my soul I I can't like forget that the great year exists it's not something I can do I can look up at the stars even now and still see things that I can't explain but I can see that stuff is going to go down a certain way because of how the stars are aligned. And I can't explain it. But I mean, even the planets people used to worship. Mars and Jupiter and Saturn. And I mean, the days of the week are named after the planets because people used to worship them. Sunday was all about worshiping the sun. Not Jesus, the sun. Monday was about worshiping the moon. Saturday was about worshiping Saturn. Thursday was about worshiping Thor, which is all another animal that we won't get into right now. <laughs> Interesting to find out if Thor was a planet. So, I have theories about planets, and I don't know if they're relevant here right now. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I theorize that the planets are all either made of or just dragons um, that have grown to such great lengths that we're like bugs. We're like flies to them. And I think Earth is a dragon watering hole. <laughs> it's, 
If you look at the continents, they look like dragons. China looks like a happy dragon doing the backstroke, quite literally. But it's my theory that dragons came to Earth to swim, because there's water here. It's like a big bubble of water. And um, our first ice age, I think, happened because, well, the females can fly, and the females flew away, and they became planets of themselves. And that's how I think that all works, and why we worship those planets, because they were here, and then they flew away and became their own entity. Just a theory. I'm not sure if it's true, but I mean, if we were like flies, apparently flies can't see us, like, and a day is a fly's life expectancy, right? So, like, imagine us being the fly and then the dragon being our continent, and we live upon it but we don't understand that it's a dragon. <laughs> and they're mainly sleeping. I think that, like, one minute for a dragon is like a thousand years for humans. So they're sleeping and laying there, and their motions aren't detected by us really, because they're sleeping or swimming. But their motions are detected by us. I mean, we have earthquakes, we have tsunamis, we have all kinds of proof that they move. <laughs> so they're not fixed in place I suppose flat earth people might argue with me. I had a flat earth guy living next door to me. And I live here on Mount Shasta. Like literally outside our window. Windows. We can see that the earth is not flat. There's this big mountain right out there. <laughs> and it's just not flat. <laughs> I don't even understand this theory. It's silly. And it's just not true. Anyway, so that's about it for me for today. But um, I also sing a song to finish up the oops to finish up the show every week and. Uh, I was singing Deja Vu by David Crosby because I thought it was appropriate. And there uh, aren't too many songs about reincarnation. And then, and I think Deja Vu is a song about reincarnation. And then I wrote a song called Reincarnation. And I sang it a couple of times. And then David Crosby passed away. And then I felt bad. And so... I started singing Deja Vu again. So I'm going to sing Deja Vu for you now.
Just the murdered. <laughs> Excuse me. phenomena of deja vu itself I don't 
know if it always relates to reincarnation. Because sometimes I think that feeling that you've been there before or you've experienced that before, sometimes that comes from our dreams. I can tell because I've had dreams and then a few days later, whatever, the same exact scenario went down. As in my dream. And that is very deja vu. But those moments where you go to a city you've never been to. And you know stuff about it. Like you, you just, you know what's around the corner. Or what it looked like a hundred years ago. Or just weird stuff about the city that you just know and you shouldn't. That is deja vu from a past life. I used to have dreams about San Francisco. Nightmares, actually. I was three, so... I used to have nightmares of riding a motorcycle when I couldn't really see. I think I was an adult and drunk, but as a three-year-old child, interpreting drunk was not easy. And I just, it just made me scared. And I thought it was, you know, it was blurry. It was like I, I couldn't see. And I was driving a motorcycle really fast. And it was, it was scary. <laughs> I found it scary. And I used to wake up screaming. I had recurring nightmares of the San Francisco Hills too. And I'd never been to San Francisco until I was an adult and, I came out here myself. As a three-year-old, I was living in Connecticut, and I'd never seen hills like that. But I dreamt about them all the time. Recurring. Nightmare. That used to make me scream in the night. My dad would have to console me. My dad remembers the dreams. Well, he did till he passed. My dad's up there in the trunk. That's my husband's dad in, in the next box. And, and a cool root beer bottle from his house. Gary just passed. So I guess it's time to say a little prayer for Gary. So may his soul be at peace. And that of all those who've left this plane. So I guess that's about it for me today. Thanks for watching. Have a weird and wonderful weekend. Studios production.